Welcome to Tiny Rails, the fun little game with a train. And here comes my train. Any second now. I could probably do with changing this train around a bit, or at least changing the engine. As I've been using the same engine for a little while now. But it does give me plus 20 passengers. Last time I picked up some cargo in Africa and it then sent me on to Japan so I'm currently in Japan and it wants me to go to Sendai so I'll just set that as my destination to pick up the next bit of cargo I need as mentioned in the previous episode I have no more cargo to deliver anywhere in the world I'm just now basically transporting cash in, uh, passengers? passengers to make cash. So I suppose technically they could be called cassengers. Oh, aren't I clever? I made up a word. But this episode has been recorded pretty shortly after the last one ended. So not much has changed since the last episode. I will give my train a burst of speed just because. I have 12 bits of cargo on my train because I must have removed an obstacle at some point and picked that up. But I'm just now going to, literally going to Sendai, pick up whatever's there and see where it sends me next. And hopefully it'll be somewhere that's easy to get to via a boat because I'm right near the Asia East port so I'm quite happy to take a boat wherever I need to go next. Might as well sell everything I've got while I'm here. Right, pick up the big battery. Hank! Alright, now to start assembling some booby traps. Ah yes, we're preparing for the great train race. And apparently we need some booby traps. Lance, what are you up to? I thought you were taking a nap. I couldn't sleep, I think we need some new cots. Well, I could use some supplies. Why don't we go buy some? Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, that's completed that part of the quest. Buy bedcot cargo from Minsk. Oh, thank you. I'm going to not enjoy that, aren't I? All right, well, I'll just collect the money from the jobs I've completed while I'm here. And replace them with more jobs. Like I say, I was hoping it would send me somewhere which is easy to get to. But I'm guessing it hasn't. Where is Minsk? Over there. Well, it could be worse. The fastest way to get to it is still via boat. Because I could go all the way across Russia and end up there. Or I can take a boat down to that Africa West port and head through Europe. Neither of which is particularly fast, but the boat trip is probably going to be the faster of the two, two even if it is the more expensive. So now I need to go pick up some cots. Just for those who are curious. Never mind, there's an obstruction in the way. Right. For those who are curious, I have completed 100% of North America and collected my prize. I have completed 100% of Alaska. I have completed 99% of Europe. 95% of Russia, 100% of, oh sorry, 85% of Asia, duh, 94% of Oceania, and I can't tell how much of Africa until I complete the quests. But a total quest progress is 61%. All those lovely coins going to the top left. 
Okay, now let me head to Africa West. And come out of Africa West and head that way. Whichever way I go, it's going to take a while. Once again, I need to collect the money from the jobs I've completed. Because, well... As I mentioned in the previous episode, I need to make about another 10 million so I can complete Europe. Which is going to take a while. So the more jobs I can complete, the faster I will get to the 10 million. Picked up some more stuff, didn't I? So I might as well sell it all. Doesn't make me much money, but every little helps. Once again, all those lovely gold coins going to the top left. Doesn't make me much money, but it just looks nice. I've got a whole 20 passengers on my train. I need more passengers. Yes. Okay, I'm now up to 32 passengers. When I said I need more passengers, I'm kind of talking in the hundreds. Now we'll get that to plane to drop a bit of cargo, which will go straight into my depot. There might be a couple of... Yeah, there's a whole two pieces of stuff in my depot. And this, this one says it can be delivered to Maturin VE, but I can't get to v Maturin VE. It's currently blocked by a wonderful town which I can't complete the construction of or a station I can't complete the construction of so even though technically that cargo says it can be delivered it actually can't be to show exactly what I mean where's okay down here it will be there is maturin VE it is this station here, these grey slates or whatever they are, are not available anywhere. And so until I can construct this station, I then can't connect the track to be able to construct this station, which I can actually get the stuff for. So it's literally this station is blocking me constructing this bit of track, stopping me getting to these stations, constructing more stations, and then being able to complete this South America upper part which point they would then lock South America Center, which would then allow me to continue onwards. But without being able to complete Barquistimeto, I'm kind of stuffed. So that is the bug slash problem with this game. However, I'm going to complete the Africa quests and then fulfill 100% of Europe, Russia and Asia before I stop playing, assuming that the completion of the Africa quest doesn't suddenly open something up that allows me to get past that blockage. I doubt that it will, but you never know. I've been lucky in life in the past, yeah, I may be lucky in life again in the future. I'm kind of hoping I'm staying lucky at the moment because I really don't want to catch COVID-19 or the coronavirus, depending on what you want to term it, and die. I'd rather remain lucky and not have that happen to me. So if I'm going to get any luck, I'd rather have luck for that than for a computer game. You know, I... Yeah, my priorities, I think I have them in the right order. Somebody may disagree. Well, people that know me may disagree. They might be quite welcome, my death. I know I know a few of them over the years would have done. Not saying all of them would have done, but I have managed to annoy quite a lot of people. I've always, always thought my gravestone will read, sarcastic to the wrong person at the wrong time, yeah, as a as reason for my death. 
as some American empties his Glock, Glock into me because I said the wrong thing. Because my ability to be sarcastic to Americans doesn't have an off switch. My ability to be sarcastic to the English or the French or the Germans doesn't have an off switch either. It's just I'm currently living amongst the Americans and they are frequently armed. So, sarcasm is something I find hard to turn off. Well, that's probably not strictly true. I probably could turn it off very easily, I just don't want to. But it may well be the death of me, assuming coronavirus doesn't get me first. Which, I am taking every precaution that I can, and following the advice, as should we all, of whichever government is advising you. And I can only hope that it, the advice is worthy and enough. We'll head to Milan next. I probably won't make it to Minsk during this episode because it's still a bit of a trek away. For amusement value, I'm currently reading a series of books on a Kindle about a hitman called uh, was it written by a guy named Remington Kane, or the... No, the hitman's name is Tanner. Just one name, Tanner. I think the author is Remington Kane. At least that's what his... His nom de plume is. Because I doubt anybody has actually given the name Remington Kane at birth. It seems to be more the kind of name you would choose for yourself. So I suspect that that is a name he chose for himself. Or she. I'm guessing that it was a he. Because let's face it, people that write Hitman books are generally of the male persuasion. It is kind of a quite nice series of books because it's they're not deep, they're not not completely mindless, but mainly because it's a series, I get to enjoy it more as the characters and the relationships and the action develops over a number of books, which kind of like watching a TV series rather than watching a film. You, know, you can have one really good film, or you can have a TV series, whilst not always great, keeps the story moving and you can attach the characters. So I kind of like series when it comes to books. Hmm. Sorry I yawned. It's been a long day. That's what happens when you get up at five o'clock in the morning. No particular reason why I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's just when I woke up and decided, what the heck, I'm not going to get back to sleep. I'll get up and do something. Like log on and start working. Because that way I could finish earlier. As I continue collecting on these wonderful jobs that I keep completing, because I want the money. It is one of the nice things about my job is unlike a lot of unfortunate people at the moment my job is pretty secure because I work for a software development company that develops software for mainframes and mainframes no matter how many times they've been declared dead since about probably the 1970s they're still going because they can process a huge amount of data and store a huge amount of data. They're just their processing capacity far exceeds these wonderful server farms and everything else. And banks, insurance companies, well, healthcare organisations, 
you think of a Fortune 500 company or a FTSE 100 or basically any of the big corporations, the odds are they've got a mainframe. They're not going out of style or business anytime soon. Yes, IBM are very good at evolving their mainframe to meet various demands. But all in all, it's just the pure processing power and the security of them. It's hard to hack a mainframe. Their security has been developed and worked upon for decades and the stability of the mainframe. There are people that have had mainframes up and running for years without it coming down. And we frequently in, the, in our side of the industry look upon people that run servers, Unix boxes, well, all the wonderful new fangled toys as well basically toys because it's frequently when something goes wrong on that just like it does on a PC the solution is mm, reboot the PC whereas mainframes don't work that way some software might go wrong on a mainframe and cause a problem but it's rare that software will cause you to need to reboot the PC or reboot the system it happens occasionally but it is very very rare so they are just as stable as all heck hence we are always going to be well I say we're always going to be around In the mainframe programming community development community support community just the people who use them in the actual banks and corporations are getting older there was one I heard of um our colleague of mine was at some company and he was working with three three of their mainframe people who were all in their mid to late 60s and they said yeah okay whatever he was trying to do yeah you need to go talk to the kid about that so he went outside with the little office he was in and said uh, they told me I need to talk to the kid and this guy put his hand up and said that's me and the kid was 62 years old so if you get into the mainframe industry now you're going to be well paid and well rewarded for the next 20 to 30 years because they are crying out for people in the mainframe industry I'm going that way and then I'm going to go that way and if you learn main, the mainframe assembler language you will be a god for the next 20 to 30 years because there are so few of them around that aren't retiring or dying off basically so if you want a long-term career in IT yes it's not necessarily pretty it's not fancy it's not playing with pretty web web pages and GUIs and following the latest fad but it is a stable and B gonna be heavily in demand because pretty much the backbone of everything is run by a mainframe yes you can run server farms uh, to do the equivalent processing but when you do the the scale that a mainframe can do the cost of your server farms and all your wonderful Unix boxes and the processing power needed to actually duplicate what a mainframe can do to do it via what we call distributed systems is so expensive comparatively that it becomes prohibitive hence mainframes they scale well and but the high end of processing power required they are cost effective the only downside is trying to find the people to actually work on them these days there are programs run out of various colleges which teach mainframe stuff there are software companies which will actually train you if you show an interest so there you go that's my recruiting pitch for, for the mainframes if you're in IT and you want to have a stable and well-paid career for the next 20 to 30 years start learning mainframes and start learning mainframes as soon as you can find someone that can teach you or find someone that is willing to train you they are out there and you will be 
heavily in demand for the rest of your career. Okay, well that's me, the IT recruiter. But as I'm coming up to Berlin, I've only got basically three more stops to get to where I want to go. I'm going to continue onwards and get there. Yes, the trek between Berlin and Warsaw is a bit long, and Warsaw and that place. But eventually I will reach Minsk, pick up whatever's needed there, which gets two of the tasks for this series of quests, or this quest, done in the same episode. And plus a load more money coming in. Because if I don't do more than one part of the one task for a quest per episode, it's going to take me quite a lot of episodes to actually finish the Africa quests. I'd rather not stretch it out forever. Yeah, that's got me back up to 10 jobs. Right, straight in and out of Berlin. In my caboose somewhere, should be some more money. Not another 20,000. That gets me up to just over 800,000. Which is not bad. As I mentioned previously, I need another 10 million to finish Europe, to upgrade all the stations in Europe, to finish Europe off. So it's still going to take me a little while to get the 9.2 million I still need. Well, we'll see how that goes over time. However, give me a burst of speed. I've still got a long way to go on the other side of Warsaw. Just trying to think what I'm going to watch on television or DVD. I have this inkling to watch the Canadian TV series Intelligence, which is a few years well, a few years old now, probably a decade or so old now, which was very good. It only lasted two seasons, I think, but it was well done. I've just got to find it. It's in a buried somewhere in a DVD collection. Keep moving straight out the other side. Then set Minsk as my destination. Now, I think I've still got the last two episodes of Death in Paradise to finish watching from the last series. Which well, I'm guessing we're all going to be end up watching old TV series over the next few weeks, months, because let's face it, TV production is pretty much shutting down all over the place. Because, well, you can't basically socialise, so everything's going to be repeat. So I might as well go through my rather sizable DVD collection. And see what catches my eye and fancy as I look for something to replace the sports that was on television that I used to watch. It's terrible. These millionaires are not willing to risk their health and lives to entertain me anymore. How despicable. How bloody sensible, to be honest. <laughs> Let's face it, if I was a mil millionaire soccer player or a millionaire racing driver, I certainly would wouldn't be risking my life just to go and entertain some people. But it does make life without sports is a little less fun. Kind of like a cake without icing. It's still a cake, but the icing was nice. Um, 
more jobs. Come on, give me another job. Get out! Let's me back up to 10 jobs. And that is how I will make most of my money to get the 10 million I need. Another burst of speed so I can get to this next station and back out of it. Again, we saw we sold all the cargo that's on my train that I don't need. And then we headed to Minsk to finish the next part of the Africa quest. And once I've finished that, we'll see where it sends me next. Be nice if it sent me somewhere close or somewhere easy for me to get to from here. But that would just be too easy. It does seem to like sending me all around the world. Which, if I wasn't recording this, would be less of a hassle. As it would give you a reason to explore the world. Which is fair enough. But really you can't argue with that logic. It's just a pest when you're trying to do more than one part of a quest in the same episode. While you're recording. Here we come into a good old Minsk, so I can pick up the bed cots. I believe it's what they've sent me out for. Bed cots. Lance, these are comfortable. I think everyone will benefit from this purchase. Hank, you know, I have been a little sore lately. I've been dying to go to Sweden for a mud bath. Hey, why don't we go get one? I'll ask Valerie to set a course for Stockholm. Sounds good. Then I can go get some copper tubing. What, in Stockholm or...? Lance, what do you need that for? A uh, special project. Well, okay. Well, at least I know the next destination is... Oh, yes, of course. You can't set the next destination because I haven't collected the money from completing this one. Now go to Stockholm, which is there. Okay. Alrighty. Well, that's where I'm going to end this episode. A bit longer than normal, but I did want to complete that task. As always, I hope you enjoyed my mutterings and enjoying watching your train and wander around the screen as it took that long, glorious trip. And hopefully I'll see you down the track for more of Tiny Rails in the near future. Stay safe and be lucky. Cheerio!